Well, hello, my friends. I am here with Dr. Viv Ewing. She's the president and CEO for Children's Square USA. Viv, thank you so much for joining me today. Andy, I'm so glad to be with you and happy to share information about what's happening during the holidays here at Children's Square. Yep. So I'm that that's a great starting point. Let's just first talk briefly about Children's Square, the mission and who you serve, and then um, we'll kind of go into what people, how people can contribute to the organization. Absolutely. Andy, Children's Square is 140 years old this month. We serve at-risk children and families. These are children and families who are facing trauma, children who've been neglected or abused, and children with mental health issues. Uh, we've been helping kids, as I said, for 140 years, and we're very proud to be a part of the metro area and the community. And, you know, this time of year, we're, we're literally just weeks away from the end of 2022. So hard to believe, but the need is 24 seven, 365, but people just, you know, it's the holiday season and the generosity, the spirit of generosity, you know, people are looking at how to give back. So how can we as a community contribute back to Children's Square? What a great question. First of all, we appreciate generosity from the community. Ways that individuals can help is by one, making a financial donation at childrensquare.org, or you can call our office or you can call me direct at 712-828-7454, and I can give you more information. But in terms of tangible items, we have lots of children who live with us because they cannot be at home with mom or dad or family, and they are here with us for the holidays. We have needs for the children because we want to provide them with presents over the holidays. Things like earbuds, socks, t-shirts, underwear. We need full-size products for your hair and your body like shower gel and lotion. We need items like tablets that have child cases on them, Nintendo Switch, uh, we have basketballs that the young people want, sweatshirts or hoodies uh, that the young people like to wear, MP3 players with all of the attachments. Uh, children always want poster boards and colors, water bottles, board games, believe it or not, are still popular with the children. Uh, today, so many kids like to use their cell phone, but the kids here at Children's Square still like to use board games. One of the other unique items we need are noise reduction earmuffs for uh, children who are sensitive to noises. So that's something we definitely need. We always need coats for children and boots as well. Well, that's, a, I mean, so many ways for people to, to give back. And thank you for that list. Um, is there a list on your website or is there? Yes, uh, the list is on our website and we are also a part of Amazon Smile. Uh, you can contact our list or access that either way. We're happy to help you do that if you're not familiar with how to do that. Yeah. And just in talking with other nonprofits too, I've actually asked the question, you know, there are the necessities, which are so important, but around the holidays, sometimes, you know, kids just want to get something that's fun. That's just, um, that's not socks or underwear. And even though that's very important, so can you speak to that? You you named off so many items, but we've got yeah. like a minute left. So I'm just going to let you talk to that. Speak I to that. will give you an example. Uh, one of the things that children want are those fidget toys. And we all love those. I have one have right one? here. And so oh, children okay. love those too. I keep one in my desk. So even big kids like those kinds of toys. Uh, other things that kids have asked us for are things like a Spalding NBA Street Outdoor Basketball, uh, something called Kevniz Goose Feather um, Shuttlecocks for Badminton Birdies, believe it or not. Uh, helmets are also needed. Yeah. Pre sharpened wood cased two HB pencils are needed because we have a school on our campus, first grade through 12th grade. Another item that is needed are mechanical pencils, medium point. And we also need pencil grips because we have kids that use pencils and we want them to be able to grip it. Even though it's a small item, it does make a difference here with the children that we serve. Things like water bottles that a child can have their name on. Those things make a difference for our children. Yeah. All right, Viv, thank you so much. 
for joining me today. And again, I know Children's Square 140 years. Oh my goodness. Yes. We're going to have more conversations about that in 2023. But I just appreciate you taking the time, sharing with us what what some of the items the kids need and how people can give back before the end of the year, Viv. Well, thank you for this opportunity, Andy. And we are having a birthday celebration on December 7th at 1.30 here at our campus. So we invite the community to come out. Okay. Viv, thank you again. And folks, we will be right back. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Justin Doherty. He is the president and CEO of Autism Action Partnership. Justin, it's so great to so great to see you today. Always, always, always. Um, this has been a big year for Autism Action Partnership um, with a lot of the things that you've been doing. But let's just start first. What is your mission, and and who do you serve in the community? Uh, we so our, our our mission is to is to serve the autism community in any way possible and to help with yeah. outcomes and improve the quality of life for families. Um, what we've kind of been evolving more and more to and realizing the importance of our mission really needs to be inclusive of the non autism community. And what I say regularly is we're not going to achieve our mission unless we're serving the non autism community in addition to the autism community, because until our community is more inclusive as a whole, uh, our families are still going to bump up against uh, a number of, of, of barriers in our community. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think, too, I mean, one of the conversations that we're having today really is about um, end of year giving, you know, we're, we're getting so close to the end of, of 2022, which is crazy to think about mm -hmm. that. But how can people contribute back to the organization during the holiday season? And then we're going to talk a little bit, a little bit about the highlights of 2022. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, first and foremost, we're a nonprofit. Uh, over 75% of our, of our um, revenue comes from uh, donors and, and generous uh, foundations and funders and, and, and organizations, I'm sorry, uh, corporations here in town. And so uh, on our website, we've got a donate. We're doing a big, a big appeal right now. We just uh, had a, a wonderful Giving Tuesday here shortly, uh, recently. Uh, so families can, if they can give of, of their treasure, we are, we'll look for that in any way, way possible and any amount helps. Uh, in addition, we have uh, a number of events a number of uh, opportunities where we engage with the autism community, uh, whether it's renting out the uh, Omaha Children's Museum or two nights uh, per year at the zoo and things like that. So there's always sponsorship opportunities. Yeah. Um, we have a number of, uh, we have sensory kits, which I won't go into too much detail, but basically we have kits, over 100 kits across the, across the community at different venues with noise canceling headphones, um, uh, a number of other sensory tools to help individuals navigate through a space while they're there, while they're visiting. Uh, we had a, some groups who sponsored drives in order to, to get materials for those sensory kits to help us build those kits. Um, so while, while there's, and there's also, of course, a number of uh, volunteer opportunities throughout the year to help uh, help us uh, further our mission. Yeah. Again, I, the organization helps so many. And, um, and yeah, you have to think about, I mean, just as an individual, when you're out in the community, you're out doing things that they're, I mean, you're surrounded by people that potentially have autism and that you're not necessarily thinking about that and how kind of what you do is impacting them so. uh, that's so much of so much of that kind of the working with the non-autism community is is what we do there's we believe and we're we're confident that uh, the overwhelming majority of people would behave differently and more inclusive if they knew what that meant Right. Yeah, if you, if yeah. someone comes to your house and they say, I have you know, an autism T-shirt on and I have autism, you're going to behave differently and try to accommodate that guest. If you don't know they have it, you will behave in a way that you uh, always behave um, and you might not appreciate the fact that 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 might let land differently. And so yeah. um, a lot of what we do is kind of what is autism? What isn't it? the spectrum, what it is and how it could be different, depending on the individual you're working with and how to navigate situations that uh, might be uncomfortable to you. 
might be every day for them and their loved ones yeah. and, and how to do so in a way that shows grace and respect to everybody. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I do want to touch on um, with this interview, and again, we're going to have a much bigger interview after the first of the year, but to me, I'm, I'm just going to speak for you right now. I think one of the highlights, the big highlights of the year was the, um, the common senses festival that was during the whole month of April. That was amazing. And oh my goodness, speak to that, please. Yeah. We're, we're still exhausted and smiling ear to ear from, <laughs> from that yep. festival. Yep. It was, uh, it was originally planned for 2020. And then this thing, it's called a pandemic. I'm not sure if you heard about it. Uh, it got in the way. So it got bumped until uh, 2022, but a uh, month long, a festival. Uh, and again, similar to some of what I've already said is that yeah. really the idea was that it is, it is for all members of the community to appreciate and reflect on their own senses and how they perceive moments or environments. And then understand that the person next to you might, because of process, sensory processing differences, you'd be experiencing it different. And we were very clear in some of the messaging that we have is it's different. It's not less. This is about how I process information and, and then communicate information. It's not, I do it anywhere, any less than anybody else. And so yeah. um, we had some brilliant, brilliant people from across the country here. Uh, we took over the Kaneko Arts Art Gallery for an entire month. We had films, we had uh, um, seminars, we had some just, it's, it's, we're still, again, inspired by what, what we experienced. And we were so happy to help kind of host and offer it to the community, but even our team and, uh, and those kind of in, inner, inner circle folks were all still inspired by what we heard and listened to and engaged with in the community. And the response is just continues to be overwhelming from, from you and others and all uh, that, that experienced it with us. Yeah. All right. So last question, because we are mm -hmm. literally a little bit over time. Um, yes. are, can we anticipate another um, Common Senses Festival in the future? Um, yes. We, we we don't know exactly know what, how, or That's where. Okay. Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yes or no yeah. question. <laughs> yes. It's, it was too good, uh, too good to, to have it just be a one-time only. We'll figure it yeah. out. We'll make it happen. Yeah. And, and I know we'll, we'll talk more about that. So I, I just mm -hmm. kind of put you on the spot because I know there's a lot of planning and, and all that that goes into it. So, um, you know what, Justin, thank you so much for joining me today and just really, you know, wanting people to know about Autism Action Partnership and how they can contribute end of year. And then also we'll have a bigger conversation as we as we get into 2023 about what's happening. So thank you. Thank you, Andy, for, for for you personally, for your connection and your support of us, and as well as all the work that you do to help kind of uh, amplify the work of, of so many of us here in this community. We appreciate yeah. it. You are welcome, Justin, and thank you. And folks, we'll be right back. Well, my friends, I'm here with Nick Bartholomew. He is the Director of Development for the Siena Francis House. Nick, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, like I said, this is a quick interview, um, but we really want to get just a snapshot of, I'm going to have you talk about the mission and then how people can contribute to the organization in the last, you know, literally two weeks of the year. So, the mission of Sienna Francis House. Go. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, thank you so much for having us and allowing us to uh, share our message and kind of um, push our uh, process to uh, your viewers. And so we really appreciate it and hope to check in often. But, um, you know, Sienna Francis House obviously is known for a lot of things, one being the fact that we um, truly create programs and serve hope for um, people experiencing homelessness. Yeah. Um, so what that means to us is it started a long time ago with one building uh, where we would just serve, you know, women. Um, obviously, that program has now grown into men and women, um, a uh, alcohol and drug rehabilitation facility. Uh, we also offer now um, subsidized housing apartments for people in need with disabilities and the like. Uh, and then our cottages uh, program, yeah. uh, which are tiny homes go online here this summer. So we've all been working very diligently to make sure that those programs kind of have a cohesive balance within our organization. 
Um, so if you do start with our emergency shelter uh, and you are working your way back towards uh, positive housing outcomes uh, for mm -hmm. us, you know, we really want to be all encompassing. We really want to, yeah. you know, have all those needs met in any way we can. So here we are uh, towards the end of the 2022 uh, season for us, and it is a hard push towards these, you know, these last sure. months of the year. Thanksgiving and Christmas are some of our biggest months, not only in, you know, the amount of people that we see on a daily basis, but also for the gifts and the uh, volunteering that we see that we receive. So um, the best way that we can help and ask for help right now is there's a daily needs list that we produce on our social medias. It can be anything from hand towels to twin sheets um, to mm. cough drops and cough medicine, which is something that we desperately need right now but also again, volunteer help and volunteer services from our community is paramount. We feel that anything that we can get from people um, in these times when we're hitting the cold months uh, is absolutely worth yeah. almost double what people do at other times of the year. So for that, uh, we can definitely um, invite you in to help us in our uh, facilities. Uh, one of the major helps that you can give us is in our uh, kitchen. We need help with kitchen prep, kitchen service, things of that nature. But again, any any help is good help for the Santa Francis House. Yeah. Well, absolutely. And again, I, this is a really quick conversation and it's coming to an end. Um, but I just wanted to give our viewers and our readers just a, a snippet of how they can help Santa Francis House. But we will have a much bigger conversation after the first of the year and kind of look big picture and what's, you know, what are the needs? I mean, needs are 24 seven, 365. Right. Um, and there's so many ways to get involved and give back to this amazing organization that, that first of all, helps so many people and honestly saves lives. That Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's really one thing that we pride ourselves on is, you know, the living conditions, I believe, yeah. are very, very um, above average, you know, I guess for what they, these, the people experiencing homelessness um, may or yeah. may not expect from us. Um, yeah. But, you know, three warm meals. Um, safety and security, privacy, um, you know, yeah. ways to take showers and things like that. We really um, fit that bill and try to fulfill those needs, whatever they may be. Yep. All right, Nick, thank you so much. Happy holidays to you. And um, I'll see you back here in 2023. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. All right. And folks, we'll be right back. Well, hello, my friends. Um, so happy to be here with Shauna Forsberg. She's the president and CEO of United Way of the Midlands. Shauna, first of all, so great to see you. Oh, it's great to see you too. We have a long history together, but it's been a while. So I know, I know. Um, well, let's just first talk. I mean, we've got um, a kind of a quick, quick chat here, but looking at end of year, how people can contribute, but United mm -hmm. Way of the Midlands, just give us kind of an overview of what that is and, and who the organization serves. You know, United Way, I think is unique in that we really connect people with who want to help in the community with some programs that are really making a big difference for yeah. thousands in the Metro. So our primary business is we um, work with over 600 organizations in town to raise money, and then we invest those dollars back into programs that help people right here in the Omaha Council Bluffs Metro. We also have a few direct service programs, so we run the 211 call center for the full state of Nebraska and most of Iowa, and then we run a program called Jobs for America's Graduates, which works with kids in the school system. So we do a variety of things, but at the end of the day, it's really about making it, uh, our community a better place for all. Well, and here's, I mean, and kind of here's the, the big news or the thing that I just find so, you know, outstanding is a hundred years, you're celebrating yeah. years. Um, yeah, we're coming up on it. 23 is our hundred year anniversary. And I think it's just a testament to our community. We, we have a long heritage of people caring for each other. And we're just happy to be able to be stewards for that. We've got some amazing celebrations uh, scheduled for next year across the community. And 
really look forward to, to celebrating this, uh, this date with us, or I guess this year with us. Yeah, and I know we will have a bigger conversation after the first of the year, but today, um, let's just kind of talk about as people, I mean, we're literally getting down to the, the few weeks before the end of 2020 yeah. to so hard to believe, how can people contribute to the organization? What can they do? Um, so yeah, fill us in on that. Yeah, so, you know, we have a year in giving program um, that that people can donate if they'd like to get involved. Um, you know, we're fortunate, as I said, to have 600 companies that work with yeah. us, but there's also a lot of people that are, fall outside of that and want to make a difference. And so they can donate at unitedwaymidlands.org. We also have a really cool um, volunteer effort called Holiday Helpers, which we sign up people from all across the Metro to provide time and talents within multiple not-for-profits in the community. So. Folks can simply go to unitedwaymidlands.org and um, check out all the different ways that they they can invest and and you know be part of our our private community. You know the holiday time frame. There's lots of people that that need help, so it's a good time to to raise your hand. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, um, just knowing that we're 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 looking at your hundred year anniversary coming up in 2023, and I know we'll have a lot of conversations around that. So. Again, this is just like a short, sweet conversation with you, Shauna. Again, yeah. so great to see you. I mean, any last things you want to want to say? Well, we just appreciate you helping us get the word out and all the great work that you all do. Um, been a long time working with you, Andy. And so know. thanks for making the effort for us to, to talk about this today. But um, yeah, so we'll look forward to talking more about the 100 year down the road. We have five different celebrations and a lot going on. So we'll put that out there as a teaser for the next time that we talk. Yeah, absolutely. Shauna. Thank you so much for joining me and friends, uh, we'll be right back. Well, my friends, I'm here with Joy Bartling. She is the executive director, Scattered Joy Acres. We're here to talk about end of the year giving. It's almost the end of 22, 2022. Can you believe it? Joy, thank you for joining me. And let's just, yeah, let us know how we can contribute to your organization. So scattered, scattered Joy Acres would love your support, being able to help with our youth program. As I have um, sat and met with... Um, you know, Douglas County Sheriff officials and uh, moms and dads who are, you know, worried about where where is our youth programs at? Where how what do we do to help these kids that are on the streets to be able to yeah. do something? And we have a very successful program that is making huge feats. We just don't have enough enough umph to keep it going and and staff to do it. But uh, if you could, you know, help us support our our programs which we use animals to do that with because animals are non-judgmental. Uh, you can catch all that on our website at scatterjoyacres.org. Uh, and if you also want to come out, we have a live nativity uh, walkthrough on December 17th that you could come out and help support as well. All right. Well, and then I'm going to, again, very quick interview, but the mission of Scatter Joy Acres is... Our mission is a place of rescue and a journey to peace. And we use our animals to do that. But now that uh, our new location has given us uh, out of the city, we don't hear the uh, sirens and able one flying over like it used to. Uh, we have a lot more of God's nature that we're able to hear. Yeah. I have a owl. My grandmother always loved owls and there's an owl that hoots in the tree every night. So uh, it's really opened up to just, you know, getting away from, the fastness of the life right now. Um, like you said, I can't believe we're at the end of 2022 already. Where did it go? It just, it flew by. So um, we would love your support in any way, um, you know, help one of our animals. We have animals that come in that are uh, terminally ill or have situations. So we have lots of programs. So if you're an animal lover or a people lover, um, we can fit your, your donation any way you want it. All right, Joy, thank you so much. And I will tell you, um, the listeners, that 
we have a much bigger conversation going to be happening on Metro TV with Joy after the first of the year. So be sure to watch that. But again, end of your giving scattered joy acres. Thank you so much, Joy, and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yes, same to you all.